Hey everyone, it's morning and it's coffee chat. Yay! <laughs> I haven't made it yet, but I'm going to. And I'm going to use my old system. <laughs> I showed you I had the new system where I have a, a, a travel coffee grinder and I've got the coffee beans organic and it's it's really strong coffee and I can't drink it in the morning I found it's like ah. so um I'm gonna just go with my own system but we're gonna have coffee or tea together let me get this opened up here so I'm out boondock I'm boondocking it and I'm out on um BLM land in Quartzsite and I have been for two weeks now I think it's two weeks and it's different. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And I'll tell you right now, oh my gosh, there are so many big rigs moving in. This is their time. The big tent is going to open up. It's that big RV show. Let me get all this. So I keep my tray. Yeah. I bought this at Ikea. This is a really nice tray. And um, I ruined my first one uh, two years ago, and so I got another one. They have the same ones there. Really nice. It's got a nice lip to it, and it's clear. I like it. So you can, like, see my hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's get my coffee stuff out. Just make my coffee. I'm going to do my vitamin right now. I'll just do coffee because I'm going to, it's actually cold in here. So I want to get this water going, get my stove going. I'm not going to show my stove making my coffee, you know, well, okay. All righty. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Back down again. Yeah. Okay. Get this going. Get something in my belly. So how y'all doing? Are you cold? Are you in the frozen tundra? Or are you down in Florida where it's nice and, uh, you know, warm? <laughs> or, yeah. Or you might be in Australia. Hey, George. Love you. Yeah, in Australia, where it's uh, it's summer. Yeah, it's not cold everywhere. And, and yeah, uh, you might be anywhere in the United States. I'm getting viewers. The My analytics show that I'm getting viewers all over the world. So, hey, everybody. If you're up in Canada, it's really cold, huh? Whoops. I know what time it is. I've got my watch to give an alarm when it's 6. I don't know why. Well, 6 in the summer when I'm in the city or, you know, like I, when I was at the beach, 6 o'clock meant let's start getting moving around a little bit because if you're going to the beach, you better get there to get a parking spot. Um, it fills up very quickly and, uh, at six o'clock you, you can, um, get there. You can start parking there, but you can't do it before because they're trying to eliminate people, you know, sleeping in the beach all night long. But what's up with that volcano and the Tonga and creating, um, it's not a large tsunami, but it was a small tsunami. And uh, Paul sent it to me, the the news. And then um, Julia White, hey, Julia, she sent um, another thing to him showing uh, cars just floating in the parking lot in Santa Cruz. Wow. Yeah. Hope it's okay. As you see... Santa Cruz, and on the back, I got a big Santa Cruz. It's all about Santa Cruz, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But this summer, I don't know what I'm going to do this summer. I have no clue what I'm going to do this summer. Who knows? I might go back east, see my family, or just do more exploring. Yeah, this summer, um, Paul and I will be traveling together, so there'll be other areas that I'll feel more comfortable traveling in. It's different when you're traveling with a partner. As a solo female, there were... it. I didn't think at the time that it limited me, but now looking back, I think a little bit it did because there were areas I didn't want to go off in, in by myself. So we'll see what happens this summer. But for now, hmm, let's be here now. <laughs> I, um, oh yeah, let me do that. Now, let's be here now. Let's do this. Uh, Tibetan singing bowls. No, I'm not a Buddhist. But, I mean, it, it does sound nice to be nice to people. And, and it sounds like, I'm a Christian. Yeah. And, uh, see, this goes here. Yeah. But be here now. Yes. Oh, my water's boiling. Yeah, well, I am here now. And it's kind of crowded. But with the Facebook group, Minnie Van Lee's This Nomad Life Facebook group, we're having sort of a, a meetup. It's not official. I don't have a I don't have a permit for this to be having classes and selling things or anything like that. We're not doing that. I'm just um with the group, I'm giving my uh, coordinates. At the very, um, at the very last, and give my coordinates. And if you want to come park close to me, then you can do that. And what my goal for that is, stir my brew, is that not only I get to meet you, but you get to meet other people who are doing the same thing. And you might be new at this and you have expressed on the Facebook group and in comments that you, uh, how do I find somebody to travel with? Well, yeah, you want people to travel with. It is, I mentioned that you're gonna be, your options might be a little bit more open if you feel that you have backup. Let me move this camera just a little bit. There we go. Okay, a little better. Nothing formal today, this video. Here, let's get this up a little bit more. Oop, too much. Here, better, better. Nothing formal in this video. This is just coffee chat. And let's just chat and um, um, let's just have coffee together this morning. Um, you might feel, you might be alone in your home. It's cold outside. You're kind of inside. I'm just putting my, my stove away because it's kind of in my way. I kind of put it away right away. I mean, why wait? Get her done. Get her done. By the way, yeah, there we go. And it's, um, yeah, stickers, Minnie Vanley. The reason I put the sticker on this, on the top here, is so I always know that this is the top. When I open this up, I know that my stove is going to be upright instead of upside down. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Uh, 
So yeah, I mean, I think it would be a good idea for y'all to meet each other if you're new at this, or maybe you're not new at this, but you're kind of tired of traveling alone. Hopefully you can meet some people and decide whether it's a good match because you want it to be a good match. Not everybody is, is meant to um, travel together. You know, you get different personality types. But first things first. See the steam coming out. Here's yours. Yeah. Here you go. Here's mine. Ready? Cheers. Yama. Oh, no, really. I really do like coffee. I love coffee. Need to write a song about that, huh? Mm. So, yeah, it's uh, not everybody's meant to travel together, but, and here's another thing with being a nomad, oh my gosh, is that when you have been solo for a very long time, one person wants to go this way and one person wants to go this way, there's like this push-pull, push-pull. There's a lot of compromising when you travel with somebody. You kind of have to have the same style. There's all different styles of being a nomad. The a nomad style. What style are you? Well, there. I, I'm not going to list, all, but there are some people that just always want to boondock. They just want to be out in 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 state parks and federal parks. They don't want to hang out in cities at all. I mean, there's a lot of nomads out there that don't do that. Me, I like to be in a city, not not like New York <laughs> or, you know, Chicago or even some of the, um, yeah, I don't want to be in this huge city. I'm not, wouldn't really want to be, hang out in Phoenix, but I do enjoy hanging out in Tucson. Now that's one of the reasons because I lived there 40 years. So when I need to accomplish something that is going to take a lot of brain power, I don't want to use my brain for other things like where do I go? What am I doing? Where, you know, what's the best of this and that? Like, where's the best park? Where's the best laundry? These things that I need. But so I like to go to Tucson where I know that I can um, use my brain for more creative things. And I just use my memory for where I'm going to be and where I'm going to park, things like that. But I mean, I like hanging out in other cities. I like to get to know cities. And San Francisco is a huge city, but it's huge in our minds. It's really not that big. <laughs> I was really shocked at uh, how it really wasn't that big. But it is very crowded, and it's so it's not that big. But I enjoyed being in San Francisco and being there for a while, hanging out. Reno, uh, Monterey, and yeah, there's just other cities that I don't mind hanging out in. But so there you might find some if you like to do the urban, I call it urban nestling, where you kind of nestle in with the locals and you just kind of, you're not, you know, yeah, you're urban dwelling, you're urban boondocking. You're not really boondocking because you don't put a lot of things out. You don't put your chair out, but you kind of hang out in the city. What I do in the city without going into it too much is I find parks during the day. So I find a place to park at night. And then early in the morning when my alarm goes all around six, six thirty, I go find a nice park and I pull out my chair and just hang out for the day and do what I need to do. Do what I need to do. Um, you're going to find, I find some nomads that are more, um, sightseers, they're boomed out. They're out. They've got their rig together. And for the next three, four years, they want to go see every national park there is. They want to, when they go to a city, they want to see what's there. They want to um, sightsee. And yeah, they're very interesting. Uh, they're very interesting people because they have a lot to talk about and they've seen so many things. So that's pretty cool. That's a different style of doing it. And like I said, there's some uh, nomads that just really just want to be out. They don't want to be around people. <laughs> they really don't want to. Let's put this over here. They really just don't want to be around people. Put that there. there. Um, 
and they might have, they travel with the dog and they might just, you know, they love their dogs. And, and so there's all types and some people want to travel in caravans. There's a caravan thing going on. So, yeah. So hopefully this meetup coming up in a couple of weeks will help if you really want to meet people like-minded and, and friends of mine, y'all are friends of mine and you follow me on on, you know, you watch my videos like you're doing right now. You're watching my videos. Thank you very much, by the way. And uh, you've joined the Facebook group. And these are people that you've left posts with, you've left comments with and replies, and you've liked their comments and, and things that these are the people that you can meet. So today is kind of a special day. Well, the RTR started. I haven't been, it started yesterday, I haven't been there, but I think I'm going to go in today. Let's go see what this RTR is about. Of course, I know what it's about, but I want to go see some people, be around people. It's kind of, it's in Quartzsite, and I believe it's at the um, the Ball Diamond, uh, the ballpark area. And what else is going on today? Well, you know, shout out to Marco. He's got a gathering also. And... I haven't been there yet. Um, it's just been so busy with filming and getting acclimated here. And actually, I have a couple, three people parked around me already. And I've met them. They recognized me and they said, hey, can we park? So, oh, okay, come over and park. We have Max here now. He's about ready to put up his tent. He's got a little spot next to me. And, of course, we got Paul here and Hobo Joe on the go. She'll be here this morning. So that's exciting. She's traveling from Texas. Now, Jack uh, travels with Jack. Remember Jack last uh, winter? Yeah, he's um, he's up in the frozen tundra right now. <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey. Oh, are you cold? I mean, we're, he, <laughs> we're dealing with minus 20. <laughs> and the frozen tundra and um i guess he's gonna be here too so um in a couple weeks cheers here cheers to all my friends the gatherings and here's cheers to all the new friends i'm going to meet yeah so what else is going on in this world out here well we've got my t i've got my tent up and paul and i we we share this tent and we split the cost right down the middle, and we've got this tent. Uh, it's a Kodiak, <laughs> Kodiak 10 by 14. So let's talk just a little bit about the tent. I've been using the tent for exercising and for going in the afternoon. It's another place to go because the sun is always shining up here usually. And you just can't sit out in the sun all the time. Now, I know some of you have other types of rigs and you've got overhangs and you've got tarps and you've got, um, yeah, you've got shade under, you know, that goes over. But as a, in a minivan, I don't. So this is really nice for me. I love the tent. And uh, Abby likes it, too. She she loves to go in there. Um, and then we've got all of those um the screens. We wanted the tent, the 10 by 14. It's called Super Deluxe. But even on the ends of the tent, there's a uh, triangle and it zips down. So you, uh, it really like, it's, it's the wall. It's like zipping part of the wall away. You've got a whole 360 that you could have just um, screen. So it's almost, you can turn it into a screen room. Those people say, I've had people ask me, why don't you just get a clam? It's easier to put up. I'm telling you, a clam will not handle quartzite wind. It won't. But the Kodiak tent will. It's rated for that. It's That's why it's expensive. It's superior tent. And there are a lot of reviews on YouTube that sing the praises. Yes, it did handle the wind it hand you have to take the awning down and which we did anyways that why put it up and then have to put it down put it up put it down then yeah because one day it's windy the next day it isn't that's that's arizona for you and it's the same in the city in tucson when i when i was there but the only thing about the city is you've got buildings that can break the wind a little bit 
out here. There's nothing to break the wind. It's just, there are no trees out here. If there are the trees that are here, there are polyvary trees and there are mesquite trees. Okay. But they, they're, they're smaller. They don't, they're more wild. So a lot of times in a city, when you see a mesquite, a real tall mesquite tree, what happened was, is they've, they've trimmed it. They've trimmed below. And the more you trim below, the more it goes up and then it, it starts branching out. And then they trim that. I've seen mesquite trees really, really tall. And, but they wanted it for shade for their house or something. But in reality, a mesquite tree is kind of a short tree. It will, but you can uh, manipulate it. Sort of like a bonsai tree. Yeah, we can manipulate it. Yeah, we manipulate all kinds of things, don't we? Let's see. So the tent. <laughs> the tent. If you watch the video, you got to go down. And then the name of the vi the video is the, the uh, Kodiak 10 by 14. Oh, yeah. Watch two seniors put up the tent. This is the first time I've had a chance to explain to you why this tent was so crazy because part of the footage of doing the top t-bars the very top i kind of took out because you couldn't see it and oh my gosh it wasn't good <laughs> it wasn't good footage and it wasn't just because we were like so frustrated it just i i couldn't concentrate on the camera getting a good shot well there's these t-bars and they have their their they have the holes in them right so what you, the goal is to get one T-bar into the other T-bar. Well, you have to push down on it to get it to go in. <laughs> well, it wouldn't go. It was, it was too tight. And <laughs> I'm telling Paul, and he, we're just exhausted. And then I'd go around the side and pull on the spring bars. <laughs> and I was like, Ugh. and it just wasn't working out. And so basically, silly me, I just told Bob, I said, the only missing ingredient with this is that we don't have the strength. Maybe we're too old to put this up. <laughs> and so he tries harder. <laughs> I know, but all of the sudden, after like going and going and going and going and going, it was a good half hour. Literally, we were exhausted. We were exhausted and frustrated. And we just were, we would walk around the tent and then go back and try to push it, push down on it to get it in. But it, it was just, it was too tight. And then finally there was this little, you know, like on an umbrella where there's this little knob and you push in on it. And then the, I said, what's, well, what does this do? I mean, is this anything that we're supposed to be paying? And pushed it in and one of the T-bars went smaller and we both looked at each other like, oh my gosh. And then we, what, what we did then, we pushed it down and it went in. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's when the giggles started. I was so thrilled, but so exhausted that it, everything became um, hilarious. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> the reason we had our shoes off is because we saw a video. We watched a lot of reviews. I'm putting it up. We watched a video where the one guy said, you're going to have to, at one point, you have to step on the the tent because you got to get, you have to step on it. And he said, and I didn't do that. He goes, and I love marks on the tent with on the canvas with my shoes. So, so I suggest taking shoes off. So we took our shoes off. Yeah, well, oh, the next time we put it up, it's going to be so much easier. It's going to go so quickly. <laughs> but I just thought it was funny. Two seniors, how many seniors does it take to put up a Kodiak tent? And I almost do believe somebody asked, well, do you think you could put it up um, by yourself? Well, I do believe you could. I do think you need strength. That last bar, the last bar going up to hold the other end completely up. Because you get the bars that are holding up. And then you got to put a pull up and pull up, right? And it just holds up the whole tent. Great design. I mean, superior tents. But um, 
I know that the, the smaller one, the smallest one, there are females who put those up all by themselves. And I don't mean to say the females aren't strong, but I think biologically we know that uh, males are, do have more muscle uh, mass than, than females. It's a, it's a, it's a hormone thing. Yeah. It's a hormone thing. Mm. This is so good. Cheers to hot beverages again. Oh, I um, got a little message here. Let me get rid of that there. This is sort of unedited. I don't know if I'll edit this. I haven't really made any snafus yet. So, <laughs> you know, we'll see how we go. But this does taste really, really, really good. When I drink coffee in the morning, my stomach, it goes... I can hear it all. <laughs> if I leave a message for somebody in the morning, like an audio share on Signal, and it's in the morning, I'm doing coffee, you can hear it's like, <laughs> it's going through down my system. It's funny. So the Kodiak tent, doing the Kodiak tent. Yeah, it was, uh, I love the tent. I'm glad we got a 10 by 14. But, you know, it does weigh 80 pounds. It weighs 80 pounds. That's like, so Paul has to uh, carry it in his ram. Um, that would be hard. If I was solo, I would get a smaller one. I actually probably would. Even though I don't boondock as much, I would probably, I'd still like to have one. Or I was thinking my daughter is, and well, my son and daughter are in Tucson. So I was thinking... Before I come out to Quartzsite, I could like leave it with them. And then when I, um, when I get ready, then when I come back and I get ready to come to Quartzsite, which I do, and I like to boon, you know, do the BLM land out here in the winter. Arizona is the place where people come for the winter because of the weather, um, to just pick it up and bring it out. And then when I'm done and I'm ready to maybe go back to California or wherever, I would, uh, just leave it with them and put it in their storage shed or the basement. They don't have a basement. What am I talking about? You know, in Arizona, there are very, they, we don't have basements. I'm sure some people might, but as a rule, no, there are no basements. Not like back east. <laughs> yeah. So you can probably figure out why. It's just the ground is hard and yeah. And there aren't as many two-story buildings either. Two-story houses. I should say there's a lot of buildings, but in Tucson, they're not real tall buildings. They wanted to, uh, keep the landscape, the mountain view, um, in view. <laughs> and so they, they didn't make as many tall buildings. So Tucson's a little bit more spread out because there's a lot more one story houses. Yeah. Although the U of A area, oh, I'm going off on a tangent, aren't I? The U of A area, I noticed this year, they've been building, and they're building up. They're really, they're not huge, not like the Empire State Building, but, you know, they're they're starting to build up a lot more and taller buildings and taking away some of the view. Yeah, they are. They're just building all these um, student uh, housing projects. And, yeah. and my son's been involved in quite a bit of them. Because he's a carpenter. So the tent, I really, uh, I recommend if you're going to get a tent and you can, uh, you can afford it and you can afford the weight in, in your nomad. Oh my, yes, Kodiak tents. Now I had to put in, they weren't any available. So I had to put in um, my email address so they could email me when one was available. And they did. And I'm like, oh my gosh, well, Paul, what do you think? You know, do we really want to invest in this? And we were so excited. We go, oh, just hit the button, you know, and let's buy it. <laughs> let's buy it. And uh, yeah, but uh, it, it was a, it was a big investment. Now, the Kodiak tent that we got with shipping was uh, about 850 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it was. So each of us is $425. That was a big investment. But the smaller ones aren't that much cheaper, but they're so good. They have a lifetime warranty, and they will honor that warranty as long as you read the manual and you follow all the... All the um, 
the guidelines for it because there's certain things you can't do with it. What, what did somebody wanted to get a warranty? And he said, well, oh, I know the awning. He left the awning up, but it rained and, and he, and it kind of, the weight of it kind of ripped it away. And he did not because they say that what you're supposed to do is let the awning down or let one side down so that it'll drip down. So you have to, they'll, they'll honor it, but you have to, you know, follow what it is. So. Okay, quartzite, <laughs> quartzite, quartzite, quartzite. Oh my gosh. Going into quartzite in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like traffic jam. <laughs> it is a little town, a little teeny town, a little village like this. And it is packed. It is um, bumper to bumper. And self-service, it ain't happening. So I want uh, to, all of you who are on my Facebook group, um, I'm just, I, I've been trying to like leave a message. I can't, I can't upload anything. In fact, when I do this video, I have to go upload it. I have to drive into town to upload and it still takes me almost an hour to upload anything because everybody here is using all this, all the, uh, uh, the data and, uh, there's not much data left, but it, oh, well, oh, well. Um, it's just, it's, it's a fact of life and probably for the next two weeks, it's going to be like that. After that, it kind of dissipates. People kind of move on, move on out of the way and go someplace else. So it's just going to be that way for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And there's other places to go too, but the cell towers in this whole area, there's, you know what? I'm not even going to talk about it because I don't know how that works. I really don't. Yeah. Now, Paul has AT&T. He's doing pretty good with his. But I have Verizon T-Mobile. Now, T-Mobile, before they merged with Sprint. Now, if you know the answer to this, leave me the message. When I heard they were merging, I kind of like, ooh, you know, so what does that mean with AT&T? Because they had a contract with AT&T to use their towers if they needed to. If we needed to, we're T-Mobile, that we would click into the AT&T towers. But if we merge with Sprint, I'm thinking it, they didn't. That contract was nulled. And uh, I'm not getting any. Basically, my T-Mobile phone, my older one, it's... I'm not getting nothing, nothing, honey, nothing. I'm not getting anything. And I couldn't even, when I was exercising yesterday, I couldn't even get music to play. It would play, you know, part of the song, never stop. How can you do that? You know, part of the song, never stop. And so, and I'd taken all my uh, downloaded music off. I went into town yesterday and I downloaded some music because, oh my gosh, you know, because I'm going to get sick of those. I better, I got to keep downloading more music because oh my gosh you know and I've got some movies downloaded on here but I'm sick of looking at <laughs> yeah that's the trouble with movies so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on Amazon and I'm going to look I used to have one I'm on a DVD player I used to have one when, when I was in Cincinnati for my granddaughter and I put it on the back of the um the uh neck rest you know the headrest and it's a holder and she could watch movies while we're traveling you know and I was driving around and I got I rented little or I'd go to the library and we would um check out really cool uh you know Care Bear stuff and stuff like that yeah and uh, she would watch those so I'm gonna get those and I had one and I didn't think I'd want it there was a lot of things now I'm looking back that I would have liked to have kept yeah that would have been cool to have that well, live and learn. I'm going to buy another one. I'm going to buy a holder and my, and my, my driver's seat. It's open. I'm going to put it there so I can watch a movie. And then I'll probably go on Amazon and just look for a really cheap. I can't edit that out. I said I wasn't going to edit it. Whoops. Okay. You saw it here, folks. I'm dripping. <laughs> I'm dripping. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm going to buy some, um, some movies, yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, here's an idea. Uh, 
I'm going to leave an address that you can send me something. If you have <clears throat> some movies <laughs> that are just sitting around you haven't watched in a while, you can send them to me. It just came to me. Oh, my gosh. Then I would have some movies to watch. So I'm going to leave as long as it's okay with Mr. Paul. <laughs> I think it will be that um, I'll be here for another month. If there's any movies that you have, send me a movie that you think I might like. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, I don't think it'd be too much if you just don't send me. Well, send me me the, the cover, but you maybe put it. Yeah, well, just send me within the cover. It can't be that expensive. Oh, okay, let's do it. Let's do it, everybody. Sounds good. It just came to me. Uh, but I won't uh, house this. I won't put it, the address down there. Or I'll put a message that he doesn't want. But it's a it's a shipping address that we have. Uh, while we're here, he he procured it. I know. I know. Normally, don't get mail. Or heck, if you got it, if you want to send us a little present. Oh, sometimes non nomads do that. I've never done that before. But yeah, okay. If you want to send me something, but I really need movies. Yeah. Oh, oh. You know what else I need? Oh my gosh, I need some music, and you you kind of know what I like. I need some more music for when I'm driving. Because the radio is not that great sometimes, even in traveling. Um, I think all the cell towers are interfering with the um, the radio waves. Did certain frequencies and, you know. So I'm looking for CDs because I do have a CD play. Excuse me. <laughs> and it's more unediting I'm going to do. I'm erping. I'm, I'm, I'm dripping. Okay. It's her morning. It's morning. What time is it? can't see. Okay, it's 6.30. Ooh. Well, I do have a, a CD player in my van, and I can play CDs. Now, I did get a new... I, when I was in Tucson, they have a place called Bookman's, and he started at Bob Bookman. Oh, it was ingenious, and he really grew. Oh, my gosh. And uh, But he... It's, it's called you bring in books, and then then you can buy them. It's a great system, but he expanded to music and instruments and, oh my gosh, um, Bookman's. Uh, if you're in Tucson, check it out. Well, I went through some of the CDs and I found a Celine Dion. I know I couldn't. And then I found a Josh Groban, right? Well, and you know, I love all kinds of music. Um, well, I'm kind of tired of them already. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, I can almost sing them, you know, uh, do you, does any of you like that uh, song Brave by um, Josh Groban? It's one of my favorites. Oh, my gosh. And that's a good song for nomads, too. Being brave. Yeah. Open your hand and be brave. You know? Okay. So, okay. So, I'm going to put that out there if that's something that you think you might want to do. And uh, send me a movie or a music CD uh, that you just don't need anymore. Or if there's a gift that you want to send Paul or I, and you can indicate inside the package of who gets what, there you go. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, I see what we're up to 40 minutes here. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at the time. Yeah, coffee. Mm. Let's see what else. I have been using my two belt with my when I'm walking around with my um bear spray and stuff. I will mention here's a story. Want a story? Okay. I was out walking or I was in town probably trying to upload. <laughs> in town trying to upload. Um met a new friend Judith and she's parked kind of close to us and she's kind of becoming part of the group. Well, she decided she loves Abby, and she decided that she wants to walk Abby. You know, Abby is, uh, she has her own personality, and she's extremely strong. <laughs> she is. She's almost knocked me over. Well, Judith wasn't prepared for it, and this dog came darting out, a loose dog, not on a leash, and it was big. And it freaked her out. It freaked Abby out. And Abby took off. Well, Judith kept hold of the leash, but she's so strong. 
Judith went down. She went down on her right hip. Shout out, Judith. Hope you're feeling better today. I, I, we're, we're checking on her often. And um, this was like two days ago, three days ago, maybe. And she went down on her hip, right? Well, she's, I had to go to the chiropractor. There was actually, believe it or not, there was one in courtside and he was open. He's only open like three days a week, but he had me open that day. She's in pain. Um, she said she felt like her bone kind of moved just a little bit. So he's been working with that. But yeah, Abby is a very strong dog and she has her own personality and she's not to be trifled with. <laughs> No. So uh, uh, Paul and I have decided, hey, you know, um, Abby's a, 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 I mean, we just love her. Everybody loves Abby. But she is, uh, she's very strong and she's very strong willed. And uh, we're working on training her. She's eight years old. And she just, so when you, if you come to the meetup, I mean, she's wonderful. But, um, can't walk her and uh, I'm hoping that if you have a fur friend a fur fur friend furry friend that you travel with that you don't let it just wander around a lot because it's gonna it's gonna um upset Abby that she has to be on a leash <laughs> that that's all I'm gonna say with that if you want to send Abby a little gift too there you go. I'm going to give you the address in the comments as long as Paul agrees. So with that, that was my little story. So let's all say prayer for Judith. Okay. And, um, that, you know, she gets healed. Otherwise she's thinking about maybe going back where she's from and go and see her doctor again and then head on back here. That's a lot of driving though. So I'm hoping that everything will turn out good with her. She, nothing's broke. He said nothing's broke. It's just that she's sore and she doesn't have as big of a place. She's more of an, she's in a Jeep. So she doesn't have as big of a, an area and she's sort of a newbie. So, but she's having fun here. And, um, Okay, well, that's that. I love you guys so much. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Yeah, subscribing really helps me. Yes, it does. And um, join the Facebook group. That's the only place that the coordinates are going to be. That's it. I mean, yeah. And um, the book, got the book. Go to minivanley.com uh, for stickers and magnets. And uh, I've got a few with me uh, if you want to come. Um, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sell them. I can't do that. Um, but I do have a certain amount, uh, section of selection of stickers that I'm going to, you know, give to the first ones who get here. And let's see, what else? Um, oh, the podcast, this Nomad Life. We've got some good podcasts going on. Uh, Paul and I, we're, we're, we're really moved, rolling along here. <laughs> Yeah, and it's fun doing them. So I love you guys so much. I really, really do. And I appreciate you. Thank you for watching me. And thank you for um, being loyal to me. I love you guys. Mwah. Bye.